Every holiday season, I decide to do a little bit of rearranging in my shop, and this year I'm kind of consolidating all my lasers into one spot. Over here, I've got the GWIC G2 20 watt fiber laser. I have the CloudRay um, QS50, which is a 50 watt fiber. And then I have the Xtool P2, which is a 55 watt CO2 laser. What you can't really see down here on the ground right out of frame is a GWIC HEPA filter. The problem with the HEPA filter is it only connects to one machine at a time. So that's what we're gonna try and fix. I wanna be able to use the HEPA filter on both the fiber lasers as well as the CO2 and have some kind of easy system to switch between them. So that's exactly what we're doing in this video. So what I'm looking to do is connect that GWIC HEPA filter to the fibers and the CO2, like I said in the intro. The X tool came with this three and a half inch hose. That is what plugs directly into the back of the machine. This is a little port that goes on the back of the machine. So that is fine, but I'm going to probably have to do something a little bit different because this comes out on the back of the machine and there's really not much room behind it. So I'll come up with something there. So what I'm thinking is we have a couple pieces to make. The fiber lasers really don't have any exhaust solutions on them. So I'm going to have to design something for that. I'm going to have to design something to go on the X tool and then some sort of coupler to go in between them. So let's go ahead and design these parts. So we're looking at the top back of the CO2 laser. We've got the exhaust right there. The wall is right here. This is actually pulled out quite a bit. Normally it'd be sitting about right here. So there's just a few inches between the wall and the back of the laser. So there's a couple things I'm looking to solve. For this exhaust port, I want it to come out and move at a right angle. So we kind of want it to elbow out that way because the air filter is several feet over there and the hose really isn't that long and I don't want it to be terribly long either. So we need to solve that. The other issue that I want to solve is this has a bunch of obstruction. You know, this is to probably uh, prevent debris from going in, but the air filter already kind of does that. So I don't really need any of that. So we're just going to redesign that whole part from scratch. And the other thing is, since this is all the way on this side of the machine, it would be nice if this elbow went a little bit further just so that I didn't have to stretch the hose quite as far. So that's what we're looking at for the CO2 exhaust. So thankfully the new version of SolidWorks has this AI feature to where you can just describe something and it will go ahead and make the part. And here it is. I'm kidding, but wouldn't that be fantastic? So here is my proposed part. From what you saw, it's gonna fit something like that. So it's gonna fit on the back right there and then go out to the right, just kind of like what I said. It was a relatively simple part. I'm not gonna go into all the details, but I basically just started with the flange that fits on the machine, kind of came out at a 90 degree angle with this um, loft. You can see there, so it's just a thin wall loft that comes out. There's some sketches suppressed here. I think yeah, all these. So it just kind of lofts out into this nice little tube. And then I have my little quick disconnect flange on the end of it. Now, if you go on printables or Thingiverse or whatever, there's a lot of these kind of um, dust collection flanges. I decided to just kind of design my own for no good reason because I figured I'm already designing this part, but it just kind of has a couple nubs. Those will mate to the opposite of nubs on the opposing part. And then there's some pockets here for some magnets. So it'll just be magnetically held together. So pretty simple stuff. You might notice a couple other little things on it. This is a feature for printing. It's actually gonna be printed on that base. So it'll be printed like that. Just, just kind of gives it something to rest on so this whole thing isn't supports. And the other little feature I was kind of proud of is this little feature right here. This is for a zip tie. There's some vents conveniently located on the back of the laser. So this will zip tie against the vents because this is kind of cantilevered out pretty far. I didn't want it to put a lot of stress on this flange. So it'll actually be held a little bit right by that zip tie and that'll hold it nice and tight. And if we go over, you can actually see the coupler. This is what I designed for the coupler. We've got a little bit of a nub right here for the hose to fit on. We've got a nice little handle and then you can see this mating component right there. So it just kind of mates against it, has a couple recesses for those nubs and then it also has magnets. So let's go ahead and print this stuff out.
And through the power of video editing and forgetting to film any of this, here are the two parts. They turned out pretty good. Um, this handle actually works really well. It feels decent in the hand. I think this will work out just fine. And for this piece, um, this actually turned out pretty cool. If you follow my Instagram, I kind of had a teaser of this sitting on the bed. And the mating of the two is really nice. Um, I'm leaving about a half a millimeter in between that. This doesn't need to fit really tight. It just kind of needs to fit. The magnets are mostly going to hold it in place. So that should be totally fine. I think that should work out. The scratches on here from when I removed the supports, I should have been more careful. The supports actually ended up looking really cool though. Here is one of the um, tree supports for the front. It's really cool what organic tree supports can actually do and what they look like. Pretty amazing, huh? So yeah, let's get this installed on the back of the X-Tool, throw some magnets in this and see if it works. And then we'll move on to doing the duct for the fiber laser. For the magnets, I'm using these half inch long by quarter inch diameter N52 magnets. I opted to just do four because I kind of wanted to keep this thing a little bit compact. You'll kind of see how it all fits into the back of the laser, but I didn't want this massive flange. A lot of the stuff I saw online when I kind of did some looking first used like six or eight magnets all the way around and had this big wide flange, and that just really wouldn't work for my application here and those really thin disc magnets don't have the same kind of strength as a longer magnet like this. The longer magnets are gonna have kind of, generally speaking, more pull force. You don't necessarily want a bigger face, you want a deeper magnet. And for the actual pockets, I'm doing a one millimeter wall in front of it, so the pocket stops one millimeter shy of the end of the flange, and then I do a 0.1 millimeter offset from the size of the magnet versus the size of a pocket. So that'll give it just enough space to kind of press in place. They hold very tight, but if I do have any issues with it slipping out, one or two drops of CA glue, and it'll be totally in there permanently. Some people might ask why I didn't just pause the print, insert the magnets and keep going. And that is a very good question, but a couple of these parts are being printed at a 45 degree angle and the pause trick does not work like that. Trust me, I tried to work it out. It doesn't work when you're printing at a 45 degree angle. You could throw some plugs in the end of this if you want, but you know, at this point we're just kind of overthinking it. So now that we have the magnets in here. Let's test out the coupler. Yeah, that works perfect. It's, I want it to kind of find its way in. I don't want you to have to kind of try and align it, but there's, it's almost difficult to even demonstrate that. It just locks perfectly together. So yeah. So this zip tie was a lot harder to get on than I thought it was going to be, partly because using any kind of tool, it just goes straight to the magnets and it's just kind of tight back there. But it works actually really, really well. This is nice and secure and it is very much attached to the machine. I don't see any issues with this kind of bending and breaking off the flame. So yeah, pretty happy with how that went on. And here is the moment of truth connecting it. That works great. I'm kind of reaching from behind the machine, so it is a little bit awkward, but yeah, you can just kind of grab it and do it and then reattach it. So yeah, pretty happy with that. So now let's go make the coupler or the duct for the fiber laser. So for this part, I'm showing the 3D printing instead of the SolidWorks, just kind of mixing it up for you a little bit. The part is very similar. You'll see it here in a second, but they did kind of the same type of thing as I just did a rectangular duct into the flange, kind of kept the same flange dimensions, all that good stuff. One thing that I would like to point out is I just recently got the Creality K1 Max. Um, I've had the Bamboo X1C that you're seeing here. And of course I have the Prusa XL and there is no perfect printer. 
The Prusa is what it is. Um, I've been very happy with it, I guess, so far. Um, it printed the large duct because it was the only thing big enough to do that. The bamboo is obviously printing this part right now, and I use the Creality for prototyping everything else. And they all kind of have their pros and cons. There really is no perfect printer here. Um, I did just actually purchase the FL Sun whatever, I think S1, maybe that's gonna be my perfect printer, but yeah, between these three, they all kinda of do some things well and other things not so well, so I don't know, it's kind of interesting. And here is the little duct for the fiber lasers. As you see, it has the same pattern on the back. I'm gonna throw some magnets in it, and it just has these little flanges that will screw down into the base. I got these little thumb screws right there that just kinda of fit in Screw it down, pretty simple stuff. One thing I did design in is there's a little bit of a width to these flanges, so you can do them like that, or you can span up to like that if you kinda wanna go in diagonal. So I gave it a little bit of flexibility, and it should work for this laser and also the G-Wick as well. It should work on either one, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, I'm just gonna throw some magnets in there, and I don't know, maybe we'll finish out this video with um, you know putting some smoke into this or something.